Hi everyone, welcome back to another Drift Cars JP video. Today I'm going to be showing you a step by step on how to do a dealer service on your 2016, 2017, 2018 uh, Mitsubishi Triton 2.4 litre diesel with the um, 4N15 uh, turbo diesel motor in it. Now, this is a pretty thorough video, it'll be quite a long video, it might be around about 30 40 minutes or so, but it's quite an in depth view on how to service your own car with. What we're going to be doing today is like engine oil, gearbox oil, air filter, fuel filter, all that sort of stuff. But I'll be showing you step by step. I won't be leaving anything out. There will be um, nothing sort of left to your imagination wondering what I've what I haven't done or or not. Now this is my mate's um, 2017 Triton. Uh, it's done 95,000 kilometres, so it's just in for a basic service. We're going to rotate the tyres, I'll show you why to rotate the tyres and where, why you should rotate them and when you should rotate them. We're going to check brakes front and rear on the drums as well and just a general check over on everything else that a dealer would check on your service. So what you're going to need for your service today, we're going to need uh, engine oil. These, the recommendation from Penrite is 5W30, the C4 Enviro uh, diesel uh, oil. You'll need 10 litres of this because they take 8.4 litres, that's including with, with an oil filter change. Uh, we're going to be doing the gearbox oil. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing the transfer because my man only gave me 3.5 litres, so I'll have a look if I've got some other stuff on the shelf. Um, we've got a fuel filter. My mates um, bought all the Ryko stuff. I normally use Genuine, but that's alright, you can use Ryko. So we've got a um, fuel filter, so I'll be showing you how to do the fuel filter on it, which is a cartridge type oil filter that's the the number you need if you're doing your oil filter we're going to be doing a, a air filter as well i'm going to show you how to do a coolant flush that's going to be in a different video i'll make just a separate video on just how to do just a straight engine uh coolant flush on your triton we're going to be doing brake fluid but i probably won't show you that because depending on what you have to bleed the brakes everybody's going to have a different experience and there's a lot of stuff online to show you how to bleed your brakes now tools which we're going to need Obviously a rattle gun if you don't, just your uh, wheel brace will do, but with a 21mm socket. A 24mm spanner, which is for your diff and transfer fluid. A uh, 12mm, uh, uh, sorry, a 14mm spanner. Uh, oil filter claw, whether you need this or not. You can actually try and use it with your hands probably, or like one of the other type of um, strap type filter removers. A 17mm spanner, which is for your oil sump. A 40, uh, 12 mil socket on an extension that's just to remove your trays up underneath the car and also if you don't have the 24 mil spanner you can just use a, a 24 mil socket on a ratchet so that's all the stuff we've got obviously and a torch now now that we've got the bonnet up this is the the time to do a check over i always start from the top and work our way down so we always start up here check for any leaks on anything check fluid levels, check our belts and all that sort of stuff before we start draining any of the oil or any other other fluids out of the car. So the first thing I like to do now, this is hot, my mate's driven it here, it's been for a 40 minute drive, so you can change your oil cold. Now, despite what people other people say on the internet, you can change it cold if the car has sat for a long period of time. Like say you drove it the day before, it was hot when you drove it, you parked it and you've left it overnight and it sat there. Now all that oil would have drained to the bottom of the sump. Now you can drain it but it just takes a lot longer to drain. You'll need to let the car probably sit for about three hours to drain rather than when it's hot like this, you can probably leave it for about half an hour and everything would have drained out anyway. So, so this is already hot. Um, we haven't used an oil flush. You can use an oil flush, which I normally recommend on every second service. Don't do it on every service because it's not necessary, especially on the newer motors that are quite clean. Um, deals are obviously dirty anyway, but um, I always do it every second service. So we haven't done an oil flush on this, but if we had, I would have put the oil flush in, let it run for 15 minutes, which it would have been nice and hot anyway. So the first thing I, I like to do is just have a general courteous sort of look around, check our levels. So if we look at our brake fluid, you can see it's quite high, which is good. Normally your brake fluid, if it's low, it's only because it's the pads are worn. It's generally not because you've got a leak in the system, depending on the kilometres you've done, but majority of cars these days don't leak brake fluid anyway. So check your actual your clutch fluid if you've got a, a, a manual one of these. Um, we'll obviously take the air filter out because we're just replacing that anyway. Your coolant level doesn't really matter unless you aren't changing your coolant. 
so just make sure it's on the upper upper level there like it is there now what you want to do is just have a look around your turbocharger this is your turbocharger just make sure there's no oil leaks all around it all around the, the um, cylinder head here just make sure there's no leaks or anything like that down there where the power steering rack is and stuff like that so we just just have a general visual look over and that's all we do at a dealership as well we just go around the car and just have a look make sure that there's nothing leaking that uh, needs attention so now what we'll, what we'll check is this is your drive belt here so see your drive belt there now you don't normally check on this side of the belt you normally check on the other side of the belt if you can see down there where the it's a bit hard to get my camera in where the ribs are there on the inside of the belt is what we're checking for if they've got cracks in it which this one doesn't this belt's fine if it's got cracks you'll need to replace it so that's that's your your drive belt it's not your timing belt or anything like that so a lot of people sort of think that's your timing belt and then we have another look around here this is where your intake is there's a little bit of oil the residue there there's nothing over the top diesel you will sort of get a little bit of a, a seepage just around where your, your intake is check all your hoses make sure there's no um no coolant like pushing out through this side of the hose here or anything like that and then just another look down over the back of the motor make sure nothing else is leaking there everything's pretty good on this thing now up the back here this is your fuel filter we'll be uh changing this later i'll, I'll show you how to change your, your cartridge inside there now so once we've done that before we jack it up what i always do i always just pull the dipstick up just to remind you to check it afterwards so you put oil in it and take your cap off if I can get it off hey that was pretty tight to get off but what I do is I always just take it out just have a look inside make sure there's no white milky substance in there or anything like that and I just sit it sit it back in like that so what we'll do now we'll get it jacked up um, make sure you use stands if you haven't got any stands to make sure you just put a wheel or something up underneath the car these are pretty good that the height of it's not too bad you don't really need to jack it up on these but we'll get that jacked up now Now that we've got underneath, the first thing I always like to do is just drop drop the oil. Now you'll need a decent sized uh, drain tray for for, uh, for this, something that holds at least 10 litres because like I said, you've got eight and a half litres to come out of it. Now when you're jacking it up, this is your jacking point here, just, just behind the, uh, the sump guard here. So this is your jacking point up here. And if you come up underneath just behind that, you look straight up, there's your sump some plug for your uh, engine oil so it's going to be a bit tidy to where I've put my jack stand but there's not a lot of spots to put jack stands on these that um, are going to give you enough height to keep the wheels off the ground once you actually drop the car back down so what we'll do is we'll crack that sump plug now with the diesels I always wear gloves we'll just get that in a better spot so you can see I always wear gloves because it's they're filthy You'll always get it on your hands as much as you try not to. Now, someone's done this up way too tight. So we'll have to. Uh, oh, that is way too tight. Whoever's whoever's got on this last time, it's only an aluminium sump. You don't need to do them like this tight. What I'll do is I'll just uh, get a better better spanner for it okay so I've just had to use a, a bar basically from a torque wrench to get that undone so when I do this up I'll show you that it's way too tight to uh, to have a sump plug especially in an aluminium sump because that's a good way of cracking your sump so we'll drop that out okay. there we go that's so why I say you always wear gloves because you always get it all over your hands with diesels and it's horrible to try and wipe off. So I'll let that drain till, till it comes to a drip and what we'll do now is we'll take these uh, guards off underneath so we can get to our oil filter. So this is where you'll need your 12 mil. I've just got my 12 mil on a rattle gun just to, to take these off because we're going to have to take that one off and probably take the front one off just to get to the oil filter.
So we've got our tray off. Now a good thing to check, when you, whenever you pull like a splash tray or off, anything off, check the tray. If the tray's got oil all over it, that's a pretty good indication you've had a leak somewhere. But this thing's nice and clean. So we'll get underneath, we'll get a, a light underneath. I'll show you where your oil filter is. So here's your oil filter, it sits right up here, right up the front of the motor. So you've got to be just a bit careful of the radiator when you go, go to pull that out. Now this is your, your front diff, so we want to check, just make sure there's no leaks around here or around the actual sump plug itself. And also just check your, your lower sump, make sure there's no leaks, anything around the, the lower sump area. Make sure your power steering's not leaking. Check these bushes here, Let's put some light on it. Just make sure these bushes here aren't all split because that can indicate like give you um, like a very vague steering feel where the rack's actually moving um, independently of the of the subframe because these bushes are worn out. So you just want to just make sure that they look all good. Which this many Ks, 90,000 Ks, I don't expect to find really pretty much anything wrong with this thing. So so we'll leave that oil drain for a while. Um, you, you can crack, this is where, I don't know if you, the way that the tightness of the uh, sump plug was, I'd imagine I'll have to use the uh, the tool to undo that because it'll be super tight. Um, and also, like I said, have a look underneath your, your bottom radiator hose. Make sure your bottom radiator hose isn't leaking. You can feel the hoses to make sure they're not hard. They should be nice and soft and they shouldn't feel crunchy when, when you grab them either. And these, these is your uh, air conditioning lines and stuff like that. So like I said, you can have a good look at your, uh, your pulleys from up underneath. Now when we do our coolant later, this is our drain cock here, which drains your coolant out through the bottom there. But um, we'll, we'll get back to that later once we, uh, we do our oil flush. So um, also we'll have a look in the front here. Just check, this is your condenser. Make sure your condenser is not completely blocked or full of leaves or something. If it is, just, just take all the leaves out. This is your inner cooler here at the front. Same deal, just make sure there's no oil leaks out of the side to indicate that the uh, the seal's gone in the side of the uh, uh, inner cooler housing. But after all, that looks all pretty good underneath. What we're going to do, we're going to pull the wheel off. And I say, before that, I'll show you to check another thing you want to check while you're under here is just check your CV boots. So make sure the CV boots, make sure they're nice and soft, there's no splits in them. Check both the inner and outer one. And if you've got a, a split CV boot, you need to get that changed pretty pretty much straight away. And same with your power steering rack boots. Just make sure they're all right, they're not split or anything like that too. Because these are not so much for leaks. What happens is when they split, you get dust and you get dirt. And it'll actually ruin the seal on the actual power steering rack. So that's something that you want to get onto if you need to, uh, if you have a, a split boot. And if you do have a split boot, you'll need to get a wheel alignment done once you've uh, done that job as well. Okay, now that we've got the wheel off, this is the time we're going to check our brakes. Now what you want to do is just check on your disc. Make sure the disc is pretty even all the way across. We don't want a big huge lip on this, this edge here and down on this edge there. So if your disc looks like this, it's nice and straight across. There's no major grooves. There's a few little small grooves. There's nothing uh, to be concerned about. But as long as your disc isn't overly grooved and got a heavily uh, big lip on the end, you're pretty much good. So what we need to do now is we'll check our brakes. Now, there's a couple of ways you can sort of look in here. You can look in there, see so if we can get the camera in the right spot. You can see that pad there, it's probably got about 40% left of its uh, pad life left. And then what you want to do is come around and also check check on the inside pad there. So I'll get the camera in a good spot. Okay, it's a bit hard to sort of see. Hang on. There we sort of go. So you can see the pad's still got that little gap there. Um, so I'd say this is probably 50%. So I'll say this has got 50%. So this will probably be due around about the time you do another 10,000 kilometers. So if your pad's any sort of lower than that, I'll show you what a new pad looks like. Now that's a new pad, just to give an indication of how much is left on these. And I would say that those are probably worn, they're probably worn about 30% off that. So they're down to here. Now here, if your pad was as close like this, this would be due to be replaced. So that pad there's probably got about 20% left of pad material, and you can see the wear indicator there is virtually at the same height as what the uh, the pad material is. So that's just to give you an indication of the two. I'll put them both together, so you can see the difference between a new pad and, a, and an old worn pad. So like I said, these ones don't need to be replaced, but I'll let my mate know that the next service that they'll be due. 
So while you're in here, you want to just check your brake lines. Make sure they're all nice and soft. They haven't got any splits or cracks in them or anything like that. You just, just go around with your hand, have a good look with the torch, make sure there's no cracks. This is your ABS sensor line. You don't need to really check that. And while you're under here, you want to have a look in your shocks. Just make sure there's no oil or oil residue around this area of the uh, shock absorber. You don't really need to check the spring, but just check the shock absorber. Like I said, just make sure it's not wet in any of these sort of areas here. And um, like I said, check all your brake lines and stuff like that. Now your bushes in here, you, you'll actually feel these to be worn. You can get a bar in there if you if you do have a knocking in the front end. Put a bar in there and then lever it, lever it up and down like that. And if you get movement in, in these two bushes there, they need to be, be replaced. And same here with your ball joint. I'll show you when I put the wheel back on how to check if the ball joints uh, got any wear in it as well. And that's pretty much it. All, that's all we're going to really do underneath here. We'll just keep letting that oil drain. It's probably dripping on the floor by now. And yeah, and we'll, we'll uh, rotate these wheels as well. Okay, next job we're going to be doing, we're going to rotate these tyres. Now, most front tyres will all camber off. You'll all see them sort of camber off across, across the sides of the tyre. So you'll get camber wear between here and here. It's quite common. So what we want to do is rotate the, the back tyres to the front because the backs tend to wear a lot more square. They tend to wear pretty much even across the, the whole uh, tyre tread. So to prolong your tyre life, we normally just rotate. We just go front to back. We don't go crisscross or anything like that. Just take the front front off the, or sorry, front off the front, put them on the back, put the back on the front. So we'll do that now. Okay, now we've got the rear wheel off, what we're going to do, we're going to check the rear brakes and I'll show you what, just to have a general look over underneath the car in the back. Same thing with the shocks, just check the shocks here, make sure they're not all wet, they're not all got uh, oil oil residue all over them or anything like that. Same with the back, back brake line, this is the only rubber line you have in the back, just between here and your diff. Check that's okay, obviously check for any leaks around your actual diff area. These here is your breather, make sure your breather moves, moves freely like that so it should be able to move back and forth it shouldn't be all caked up with dirt because that's your diff breather now what we're going to do we're going to pull the uh the brake drum off so we can check our rear, rear brake shoes so there's a couple of ways to do it sometimes well i haven't even touched this one yet so it might come yep this one will probably come off if they don't come off there's two little uh m10 bolt holes here which you can put a, a bolt in and just do it up and it'll actually pull the, the drum away from the actual hub but depending on the amount of case and how much off-road work you've done like this hasn't done a lot of off-road work this car they should just come off like that right so now that we've got it off now your rear shoes will wear differently on each end so this is your, your, your leading shoe this one's your trailing shoe so this leading shoe here will do the most amount of work this is the front of the vehicle that way down that way so this is your leading shoe so this this will do most of the braking so every time you hit the brakes because your wheels rotating this way the slave cylinder here pushes out that way so it pushes most of the the pressure onto this side of the actual uh, brake shoe so you can see here it's worn fairly thin it's probably got around about probably 30 percent left on that that brake shoe there you can see the piece there between there and the the, the metal part of the shoe so these will probably be due for a replacement soon. I'd recommend my mate to do these on the next service. So we'll be we're doing another video on how to do rear shoes in in the, the near future. So this is your, your trailing shoe. So your trailing shoe will always have less wear on it. It's just just because this the because the disc is spinning this way, it only sort of catches sort of part of this uh, this shoe. That's why our disc brakes are a lot more efficient because I actually grab the whole of the uh, the disc. But these work better in water. So. There's uh, pluses and minuses. So this shoe you can see is not not as worn. This one's probably got about 40% to, to nearly nearly 50% left on it. So, but you always do them as, as I said anyway. So that's what we'll be doing on the next uh, service. Now, while you've got this, this is your sleigh cylinder, like your wheel cylinder. So once you um, you should be able to just push push these rubber boots here, and you should be able to feel if it goes like makes like a like a sort of a squishy noise it means that there's fluid in there and you've got a leak but generally you'll see the, there's fluid around here if you've got a leak so if they're leaking you need to replace them but they're pretty uncommon these days to uh need replacing so what we'll do once you've got while well, you've got the um the drum off you normally just roll them over that way just 
just let it roll on the ground, get all the dust out of them, and then we'll um we'll throw that that drum back on. So now that that pretty much um, wraps up the suspension parts of our service. So so you just got to make sure this goes all nice and even and sit it in. So I'll throw this wheel back on. I'm not going to film that. But that pretty much wraps up the back end. Apart from like changing the diff oil and stuff like that, that's about all you really need to check. You can also check why you're on here. Just check your, your spring hangers. Make sure there's no um, worn bushes in there. But this, like I said, at this many Ks, we're not going to come up with any sort of things that are worn out on it. And I'll show you the rear shackle bushes. So these are your rear shackle bushes. You want to make sure that the rubbers here aren't all pushed out and all split. Being OEM, they last a fairly long time. If you put nolothane or urethane bushes in them, they normally de de deteriorate a lot quicker. So they're all fine. So we don't need to worry about anything else with a leaf spring. The only time you worry about a leaf spring is when it snaps in half, which you're not going to get that on this amount of Ks. And while you, when your wheel's on, it's a good time just to check your steering rack ends, also ball joints. So what you want to do is grab the, the wheel and just push this side and, and pull that side. So just you want to just like turn the wheel slightly back and forth. And if you can feel any type of knocking, that's your steering rack. So this, this thing's nice and tight. And then what we want to do is get a bar or anything, like a shovel, hand or whatever, just put it under the wheel and then just, just try and lift the wheel. If you can lift the wheel, that, that'll indicate like a ball joint. Same as here, if you can grab the wheel, push push at the bottom, push at the top, and pull them back, back and forth. And if you can go like that and you can get any type of movement, it will either indicate a ball joint or an actual wheel bearing worn on the front of them. So, I see you just go like that, give them a good, good, good feel around, make sure everything um, feels, feels nice and smooth in there, and we're all good. That's pretty much it for our... Uh, checking your suspension and stuff like that so what we'll do is we'll get under now we'll uh put the sump plug back in because that's had enough time to drain and we'll drain the oil filter and we'll finish off the rest of the service so we can see now the oil basically just come to a drip so what we'll do just get your sump plug give your sump plug a nice clean now this is a good time to replace this uh, little washer on your actual sump plug. My mate hasn't supplied this one. You can kind of get away with probably like three or four services just using the same one. Depends on how tight you do it up. As long as it's not squashed and splayed out or anything like that, you should be fine. So we'll throw that back in. And this is where I'll show you on uh, how tight to do it up where you don't have to go crazy on them, especially on an aluminium one. So we'll throw it in. What's good about these, they've got a lot of threads. So you can probably go a little bit tight on this. Some of the sumps where you've only got like a short sump plug bolt like that, you'll actually strip it out pretty easily. But all you need to do it, do it up is do it up finger tight like I have done. Just get the camera in a good spot. Then get your 70 mil spanner, and then just do it up till it's till it's it's firm. And then you literally go about that much further, and that's it. That's as far as you need to do it. You don't need to like hang off it or anything like that, and that's more than enough uh, tension on that that bolt. It's not going not to come undone. And you've got to remember, at the end of the day, it's only holding oil in. It's not holding a wheel on or anything like that that's uh, d detrimental to the car. As long as it's tight and it's firm, like I said, you'll be fine. But you don't need to go crazy on it because you're only going to end up damaging the threads and then have to end up replacing your sub sump or get your actual sump retapped. Okay, so what we'll do now, we'll drop the uh, oil filter. So this is the point where you, you're really going to need a, an oil filter tool to undo these. Um, the, the tools like this are probably the best ones to get. They kind of grip into the filter, but the, your strap ones are pretty good that you can get from Super Cheap Auto and places like that. So this is not too bad. I thought it was going to be super tight after the, the way they did the, uh, the sump up. So once you, once you get it reasonably loose, it's going to start to drip. And, and miss my bucket as usual but so what you want to do is just loosen it off and then just let it run once it sits here like that just let it run till it stops you don't want to um pull it out too early because you're only going to just make it make more of a mess on the ground so we'll just leave that to sit and what we'll do is we'll go and check the gearbox so now while the oil field is draining we're just going to come underneath we're going to have a bit of a look under the gearbox here just do a bit of a check now there's a bit of grease here that's that's nothing to be worried about that's because these have got greasable um 
unis on the uh, tail shaft so you can see there's got a grease nipple there which generally once you pump them up you always get a little bit of grease pop out of them and stuff like that so there's nothing to be uh, too concerned about check here make sure you haven't got a rear main leak normally you'll have oil come out of these little drain holes here which is uh just in where your clutch sits that'll indicate you've got a rear main leak which is a pain in the ass and you don't have to pull the gearbox out so this is your drain for your, for your gearbox for your, for your manual transmission oil and around on the side which side was it on just here's your filler so there just next to your tar shaft that's your that's your filler for it so what you do we just have a, a, a visual look make sure there's no leaks between the uh the, the joints in the casing same as here between here and your transfer now this is your transfer case here at the back these are the same fillers here and there's your drain there for your transfer case these take about one point or 2.3 litres of oil for your transfer um, we're not going to do that today we're just going to do the uh, gearbox and same as here with your rear tail shaft just have, have a look just make sure there's uh, not an ex excessive amount of grease this one's pretty much normal just where it's been greased now here's your tail shaft centre bearing let me just get this torch into a better spot Okay, now this is your tail shaft centre bearing. Now what you need to do is put your hand here on the tail shaft and try and lift, try and lift it up and down. Now you can see there's a little bit of movement there, but nothing excessive. So if this this rubber here is all cracked, you'll need to replace this um, bearing. And quite often, if you if you get knocking and noising noises through your uh, drivetrain, like when you're accelerating and stopping, generally it's this this bush here. And then we just check the back of the tail shaft all the way to the diff. Make sure the rear unis look fine, it's not excessive amount of oil leaks. And obviously same with your uh, exhaust system. Just have a visual check your exhaust system. Make sure there's obviously no holes. Now generally you get holes where water's going to sit, but with diesels you don't get a lot of water in them. But normally where the exhaust will come down to a low point, that's that's where you'll probably get a hole in it, and a hole here, somewhere like that. And generally where the joins are, just because that's just where water sits in the exhaust and stuff like that. And this thing's fine like it hasn't done enough case to uh, have any real issues with it so um, you can I won't be doing on this service but like I said you can go around and grease all these grease nipples up on your tail shafts it's a good thing to do probably about every sort of 40,000 k's go around it and grease everything up um, that's if, you, if you've got access to a grease nipple but like I said today we're just doing a basic service just something that you'll be doing like an intermediate service at your dealership Okay, so that's drained for a while now. It's come to a drip. You will get more oil come out of it once you actually unscrew the oil filter the whole way off. So what I like to do is try and hold it onto the actual housing and just, just pull it away slowly like that just so you can control the, where the oil's going to go so you're not just going to get it splashing everywhere. And then just hold it there for a little bit till, till that sort of part drains out of the filter. Okay, so once it slows down enough, put your, put your filter down and then just let it drain out and sit there like that. Now you don't need to let this drain for any sort of excessive length of time. Obviously wait till it comes to a drop. That's obviously still still um, dribbling out a little bit uh, quickly. So we'll just wait a little bit till that stops. Okay, now that's pretty much just in a drip. So get your new oil filter, take your plastic cover off it. Now what I like to do um, is you don't have to use the old oil, just grab just a little bit of the old oil and just put it on the seal, just run it around the edge of the seal like that. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's old oil, people will say to you just put fresh oil on it but you're not going to ever get all the old oil out of the engine anyway so you're still going to have some in there. So we'll throw that on. Now these only need to be hand tight, you don't need to use any tools, so just wind up till it's firm and then just go pretty much as tight as you can do it by hand once you get into it like probably two or three turns like that tight that's it you don't need to put anything else on it obviously wipe it all down so you know you haven't got any leaks afterwards so wipe, wipe it all all around and that's it for underneath the car so what we'll do now we're not going to put the tray on because we're obviously going to do a coolant flush on it um i don't think the tray's got a hole on it for that but um yeah, we'll leave the tray off and we'll put that on after we've done our coolant flush. Now once you've got your oil tray out, it's a good time to tell you how healthy your engine is. So just check how many litres are still in it. So this is saying right on the, just, just under 8 
eight liters uh, have come out of it. So that's pretty much bang on. So you should use around about five, 600 mil of oil in between services, which is pretty, pretty sort of standard. Now what we're gonna do, uh, also recycle your oil, put it in the old container, take it to the tip or a recycling center, because you know we wanna service our own cars, keep them on the road for a while. Um, don't throw it in the bin, like I said, just take it there and uh, recycle it. So we'll drop the car back down, literally just to make it a little bit easier to work on just because it's up so high this thing being a four wheel drive um, and we'll um, go from there. Uh, messy jobs. Now with the um, with the gearboxes what you always want to do is before you drop the the lower drain bolt always make sure you can get the filler one out first because if you can't get the filler one out and for some reason it's stuck in the box or you strip the head off it if you've drained that fluid out you're gonna to have to pull out the shifter out and it's a pain in the ass to try and put the the oil back in it so like i said always take the the filler out first and then undo your, your drain now this i th looks like a different one i think that's it looks like a 19 so i'll have to get a different uh spanner for that up oh, my apologies it's actually a 17 mil so these are generally pretty tight so i normally try and put two spanners on it just give yourself a little bit more leverage um once you got that one out, take, take the top one all the way out. You might get a little bit of uh, oil drain out, which is no issue. So there's a little bit of oil. Nothing's come out of that one. Then undo our 24 mil. Just in a bit of better position. These are pretty tight as well, generally. That one's not too bad, which is good. And someone hasn't gone crazy on, on over tightening it. So this you want to try and catch because it comes out, it'll come out in a bit of a blob. And we've just dropped our uh, filler plug in, so we'll just take that back out. Yeah, these normally come out reasonably quick and a bit messy. There you go. So now on this um, sun plug, you'll actually have a magnet. Now the magnet will be covered in crap, which is pretty normal. If you've got any large, big pieces of, of metal in there, that might be an issue. But just get the sun plug, wipe it clean, take all the crap that's off it. So you're just left with a nice, um, nice clean magnet. And then we'll set that aside and let that drain. Okay, now we're filling up your gearbox. I've got a pump. There's a few different ways you can do them. You know, the, it, it's a pain job to do because you've got to sit there and pump everyone. I've seen now you can get electric pump that go on your drill, which that would be uh, what I might invest in next time. So now that we've let that drain, you don't need to leave these drain for too long. It all comes out pretty quick. Let's get our, um, our sun plug, like I said, make sure it's all nice and clean. Throw it in. These are the same same as your engine oil. They don't need to be overly tight. You generally do them a little bit tighter than your um, engine oil, but nothing nothing too excessive. And that's it. Just just nip it up. Don't go crazy on the thing. And now we'll stick the uh, our pump in and start pumping. Now on your gearbox, you pump it until the oil starts coming back out. So you just keep pump 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 pump. Um, two and a half. These are 2.3 liters for these. So we'll, we'll just pump it until the oil starts pop, pouring back out of the side of it, and then we'll put our sun plug in. And it doesn't matter. Like you, you can put the sun plug in with a little bit extra, and it's not going to make any sort of a great difference or cause you any sort of issues. So we'll start uh, filling it up. So now we've got that full. It's just running out like that. It's just time just to free your plug in. You only need to do it up one handed, like I said, this is a, another plug we don't need to go uh, too crazy on, on doing like super tight. We just do it up till it's firm, then just give it a, a quarter of a turn, and that's it. And now we'll move on to the transfer. Okay, so now we're going to do the uh, transfer oil, same as, the, as before, under your top bolt first. Take it all the way out. See a little bit of a drip drip start happening. Looks pretty clean, the uh, transfer oil. We'll crack the bottom on it. Let's 
get our tray lined up. The same as before, we'll let this drain. Take probably about five minutes to drain. That looks pretty clean actually, which is good. Obviously hasn't done done uh, much off-road work. It's uh, one of those uh, city-driven four-wheel drives. Um, it does a lot of trips down to our uh, Threadbow and back and Perisher and back sort of thing. So, so we'll let that drain. Once that gets down to a drip, and then the same as before, I won't show you this time. Same same as before, fill it all the way up to the top until it starts running out of the top. Put the plugs back in, and we're all sweet. Okay, it's time now to fill our oil up. Make sure you get a nice clean funnel. Take your uh, oil cap out. Now these are going to take 8.4 litres, so you can pretty much measure it out in your uh, container and just throw 8.4 litres in it and uh, you, you quite often don't even need to check it, just, just put 8.4 litres in. So I've measured out exactly 8.4 litres, I'll put that in, let it all drain drain out and then we'll, uh, we'll start it, let the oil filter fill up and then we'll uh, check our levels. Oil cap back on. Nice, do it nice and firm. Don't get crazy tight on it. So what you want to do? We'll jump in. It's going to start it up. So what you want to watch for is just watch your oil light there. So you start it. Wait till the oil light goes out and let it sit for another 30 seconds or so. And we'll turn it off and we'll go and uh, check our lip. Okay, so now we'll just pull our dipstick out. Check the level. Now, a good thing to tell, if, if you've bought your car second hand or whatever, and you, you want to know if your engine's been looked after, if your dipstick's like this, nice and shiny, there's no st uh, tarnish marks. The only reason a dipstick will have like a dark tarnish mark on it, it hasn't been serviced. That's that's the only reason they get it on there. They don't get it just because the car's old or whatever. It's just because they've used low quality oil and, and not changed the oil regularly. So there are right on the dot, which is perfect. So that's 8.4 litres. They've even got an X on there to tell you don't put that much oil in it. So that's spot on. So we'll go across to our, our air filter now. Okay, so the air filter box, two clips on the top. Pop them off like that. Pull the top of the box towards you. And out comes your old air filter. So you can see that, pretty dirty. That's about what I would say to replace it. I wouldn't even bother blowing that out. I'd just put that straight in the bin and uh, put in a new one. So here's our new new air filter. So you compare the two together. This one's got a, an extra uh, protector over the, over the front of it. So that they just sit in the same way you pulled it out. And then push it down. I'll show you how it sits in your air box. So it should sit in like that with the gauze, gauze facing upwards. Sitting fairly tight. This seal is what actually seals it to your box. Just see if we can get the camera to balance somewhere. Not many uh, spots on this trying to get your camera to balance. Okay, so push the, the tabs. Make sure you, the lower tab's going first. And squeeze the top down. Push it on and done. Air filter done. So we'll throw your other, other air filter in the bin. Okay, so that concludes your first basic part of the service. The next part we're going to go to is the fuel filter and also the coolant flush. The coolant flush I'll do in a second video, like I said before, and it'll just show you how to flush the coolant out, put your new coolant in and bleed the coolant as well so you get all the air out of the system. So what we're going to do is take the car outside. Don't do your fuel filter in the garage because it's messy. You'll get diesel all over the ground, stuff like that. So I'm going to reverse it out into the driveway and I'll do it out there. Okay, so we're onto our fuel filter. So this is your fuel filter into the back of the uh, engine bay. You've got your primer pump on top. This is what we need to pump a bunch of times once we put the fuel filter in. So what you need to do, there's a big ring on the bottom here. Uh, let's see if we can undo it. Uh, I already cracked this one a little bit before just to make sure for the purposes of the video I could get the thing off. But you should be able to undo it by hand. Just wind it down until it goes loose. Then you should be able to lift, lift just wiggle it because there's a seal in here. Give it a wiggle. Then up it pops. And there's your fuel filter there. So you can see it's pretty uh pretty dirty. It's um done its job. It's took all the uh crap out of the fuel so we don't don't run it all through the motor. So now you just grab this and just just wiggle it down. 
Okay, so you'll get plenty of uh, diesel leaking out everywhere. So that one goes straight in the bin. This is this is your new 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 filter here. So what we'll do first, we'll just sit that up out of the way. We'll go throw that in the bin. All right. So what we're going to do on the top of your filter housing, you'll see there's a seal, a rubber seal O-ring here. You should be able to pull it down. It shouldn't be super tight on there. You see, look at my cool gloves. They're working really well. So you need to take that seal off, get rid of it. Your new filter will always come with a new seal. So you just place that over the top there. Make sure it hasn't got a twist or anything in it like that. Just just rotate it like that, just to make sure it's 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 set into its groove the whole way around. And now this seal here is what pushes up into your housing. So what you want to do is just get get a little bit of diesel on your finger, just run it around there. A little bit of diesel around on that seal as well. It just allows you to push a thing in a bit easier. Otherwise, it won't it won't pop pop in. So push it in. Once it sits in, that's it. Sit your filter over the top. Just be careful, you make sure you slide it down nice and straight. Get it to sit in over your old seal, or your new seal, I should say. Just give it a push down. Then grab your screw, your, uh, your big uh, clamp. And just make sure you try and get it lined up nice, nice and easy. You don't have to force it on. And then wind it all the way up. Do it up as tight as you can kind of go with your hands. You don't need to go to town or put any tools on it. So just get it up until it stops. And that's it. And then start pumping. So because we've taken all the pressure out of the fuel line, you need to pump the little primer here until it gets hard. So it's starting to firm up. So when you virtually can't push it anymore, that's it. So what I'll do is I'll get my mate to go around and he'll start the car. While, while we listen to my wife sing uh, dinosaur songs with the kids. <laughs> it's because we're outside, up, like I said, it makes a bit of a mess once you um, do this. But what we're going to do, we're going to start it up and check for leaks. Sometimes it'll start and cut out. So what you want to do is have a look around the body there. Make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. Did you turn that off? No. No, alright, start it again. Alright, just stop. Okay, well now we'll just give it another prime. Sometimes because you get a little bit of air in the system. Okay, start it again. Okay, so now we'll, now we'll leave, leave that run for a little while to make sure everything's fine. We've got no leaks or anything like that around the body. And that's your fuel filter done. Okay, well that concludes the service part of the uh, job. Um, what I'm going to do, like the next video I'm going to do is the coolant flush, but I'm going to let, like I said, I'll leave that to another video. So thanks for watching this video. Um, if this helps you, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any other questions, just please ask. Um, subscribe to the channel if you can. Um, the more subscribers I get, the more I sort of try to do more videos and it sort of inspires me to do a little bit more on the channel and stuff like that. And I'm only doing this for, for, for the love of it, not for anything else. It doesn't, doesn't make me any money. This is just for, to help other people save some money, do a service himself. And sometimes, you know, you, you get a bit more satisfaction if you've done it yourself and you know it's been done right too. So, like I said, if there's any questions you need to know about these with the Tritons and stuff like that, There'll be further videos on this Triton because he's a good mate of mine. We're going to be doing the front pads and rear, rear uh, brake shoes uh, later on, probably in a couple of months' time. And yeah, so thanks for watching and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you on another video. See ya, bye.